Hello and welcome to a Chessima Chess, the channel where it is absolutely okay to fall asleep during class because this is where we learn chess and we improve while being supremely relaxed. The subject of today is the queen bee, the boss lady, the queen. This piece is the strongest in chess. So when you move her from some place on the board to some other place on the board, you are moving a lot of power around. So of course you want to be careful, you want to channel your power in the most effective way. And that, that is why this particular video is sponsored by Fabulous, the number one app to build better habits and achieve your goals. I have a dream that one day this channel can be a full-time job for me. You probably also have some dreams of your own. And maybe you also know that feeling. The feeling of getting good ideas, but having a hard time putting them into practice. Fabulous helps me personally because one, it doesn't have a preconceived notion of who I should be. Instead, it asks me questions about where I want to go and then it slowly builds habits and comes with suggestions based on what works for me and what does not work for me. Second, it is a strategical app. It is like in chess, where you first develop all your pieces so you have a solid foundation for your game plan. And with Fabulous, it's the same. You don't start trying to run a marathon. You start by taking a walk. That is literally part of my fitness journey on Fabulous right now. The point is to make it a habit, something internal, something you do automatically without spending energy or exhausting your willpower. I just want to show you this one thing here that really helps me because I'm a social person. It's called circles and here I make pledges about what I want to do and I engage in other people's journeys. If that sounds like something for you, you can start building your ideal daily routine. The first 100 people who click the link in the description will get 25% off a fabulous subscription. So, let's get learning. Talking about the Queen. And you are, of course, absolutely free to just drift off to sleep if you feel like it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a game that was played a long time ago that illustrates how not to play with your queen. You as a chess player must know how to treat a lady. And then when I've shown you this very short game, I will show you some examples of how to use your queen. The game starts with a pawn to d4. It's a game between a guy called Wilhelm Steinitz with the white pieces and Henry Bird with the black pieces. Wilhelm Steinitz, your side, he was the first official world chess champion. And his thing was what we call positional chess. He could play tactics, he could sacrifice pieces, you know, he was a world chess champion. But his thing really was 
understanding on a very deep level what the position called for. And we're going to see this in action here against Henry Bird, who was our top player at the time. Yeah, just a quick historical note about Steinitz. He won the World Chess Championship in 1886 against Johannes Zuckertod. So this game was played in the 1800s and it's a, it's a little beauty. So we saw uh, e6 from Bird and e4 from Wilhelm Steinitz. And what's going on here? Does it have something to do with the queens? Um, not so much just yet. What's going on here is we put the two bones in the center and we take control of all of these squares. Black challenges us by playing d5, asking a question of the e4 pawn, because of course black does not want to just allow white to take the center. Knight to c3 protects the pawn so that when d takes e the pawn is captured Steinitz can recapture with the knight and it is here the lesson really begins nowadays it is well known that in this position the correct move is knight to d7 and uh, the point with knight to d7 is that the knight looks after f6 so it can capture something on f6 if need be and that is actually about the queen here right now this queen is in a little bit of danger in a very subtle way and i'm going to explain it all because uh, some 150 years ago, Henry Bird played knight to f6 here. And this is a mistake because of the queen. So after knight f6, we're going to see a very interesting sequence of moves. Steinitz starts out by capturing the knight on f6 knight takes f6 like so this is check the knight goes to the side and looks onto the chessboard where he can no longer participate you may say that this looks like no problem at all it's check and we have lost the knight but we can recapture this pesky knight in two ways we can capture with the g pawn or with the queen and maybe we don't really want to use the g pawn because if we do we will have uh, the pawn structure will not be as good if we try to castle there will be a hole Maybe we are not so satisfied with that. There would be a positional concession. That's not something you want to do against the positional maestro Steinitz here with white. But we just capture the queen, right? Queen takes knight. And uh, knight goes uh, to the board. Look outside of the board and looks in. We even developed a piece here. We have the queen in play. Black should be happy, right? And the thing is with the queen that she is so powerful that she can't really be replaced. You know, you can't give her up for a rook and think it's fair because obviously the queen is so much better than the rook. Same goes with knights and bishops and pawns. 
She is unique and she is so powerful that you can't really exchange her off. And uh, let's investigate how this becomes a problem for black here. Because the only way you can make sort of an even trade is queen for queen. Otherwise, you need to find a way to get three pieces or both rooks for the queen, which can be very, very hard, and often it is not even enough. Steinitz played knight to f3. It looks like nothing much is going on in this position, but white actually already has very serious threats. It's all about this queen. She's out too early and she doesn't have support from her fellow officers here. And the correct move here is sort of the paradoxical h6. Trying to protect against something landing on g5. But Bert didn't see the, the danger, and he played knight to c6. And here we have sort of the first real moment where I can teach you a hard and fast rule. And the hard and fast rule is, do not get the queen out too early unless you have a very very good reason and here you see almost from the start of the game Steinitz played to lure this queen out and now he's playing against this early queen this queen is vulnerable because she does not have support if she has support she can go in for a very strong attack, attacking maybe the king, or getting in, getting some good forks. Um, but when she doesn't have support, she goes from being very powerful to being very, very vulnerable. And the bishop here plays to g5, bishop g5. So what's going on? Well, the knight is defending the bishop, so the queen can't capture the bishop. But the queen can, of course, move, so the queen is not getting trapped. So what is this bishop move about? Well, here we have the second advice I'm going to give you. If you are playing against a queen that has been developed too early, or you have lured her out, what you want to do is you want to put your pieces in play in such a way that you win Tempe against the queen. Winning Tempe means that now this queen has to move again. Bird played queen to f5 and now it's white's move again. Can you see? Can you see that? It's like you are getting free moves as white. You are not necessarily going after winning the queen, or not necessarily going after winning the game on the spot. You are just taking advantages, like getting free moves, like getting free moves, and you are taking those advantages, you are putting them in the small bag over at the side. You put the advantages in the bag, you collect may at first it doesn't look like much but you just build and build until you have like a huge amount of small advantages and then you will see that the position will be very easy to play all of a sudden you will have many good moves and your opponent will not have good moves okay okay so i'm going to ask you can you find a way to win yet another tempo against the queen. 
Is there a way to move a piece into play, put a piece somewhere where you would like to have it anyway, and attack the queen at the same time? Very good. Bishop to d3 attacks the queen. The queen here is in very big trouble. The best, um, the best shot really was to play queen to uh, a5 check, and maybe black could hold on a little bit. White would have a very big advantage. So he played queen to g4 with the threat of capturing on g2. And here we reach a point where we have now collected so many small advantages that we actually have a winning position. And that is sort of the cruel thing about chess, is that you can play really well, you can play nice positional moves with good strategy and at some point you're going to have to find a way to convert that into a win somehow and you're going to need calculation you're going to need to find a way to play a forced sequence of moves that takes a dynamic position like this one where you have a dynamic advantage, which is that your pieces and your center is very nicely developed. And you're going to have to convert all that, all that dynamism into something static. That could be a material advantage, or it could be checkmate. A material advantage, what I mean by that is that you have more pieces or better pieces than your opponent. So maybe you have rooks and your opponent only have bishops, something like that. And in here, there is a forced sequence. And it starts out again by attacking the queen with h3. This attacks the queen. The queen can't go here. She could go here, maybe she's been hit by g4 and now she doesn't have anywhere to go so that doesn't work here here and here all attacked this is attacked so the queen only really has one move only one square she can go to where she will not get captured immediately but wasn't that what she really wanted to do anyways? To play queen takes like this. Queen takes g2. And this is the part about that you need to calculate. Because before playing a move like h3, you of course have to see, okay, what if the queen goes and captures here? But that's where this video hopefully will help you situations like this because if you find yourself in a situation where you are chasing a queen around and she doesn't have support then you should be able to think okay she's not that dangerous if I can get her closer to my pieces maybe even giving up a pawn or whatever is there a way Maybe that I can trap her, because I'm not going to get checkmated. Because you now understand that the queen is vulnerable. And is there a way to trap the queen here? Maybe you can pause the video, maybe you can just think about it for a second, while I tap the board a little bit.
see what has happened the queen can't go here protected by the bishop and the king can't go here protected by the knight this is protected by the rook the rook is protected by the knight the knight is protected by the bishop the pawn is protected by the rook this square is protected by the pawn this square is protected by this pawn and this bishop is protected by the knight. So the vulnerable queen was first lured out and then she was dragged closer and closer to White's army. So we had a single soldier attacking 16 soldiers. Now who's going to win that fight? If the general of the 16 soldiers are untrained or unqualified of course the clever single soldier can do a lot of damage and maybe even win the game for the opposing army but if the general for the defending army here organizes their pieces in concert and uses the principle of exploiting the vulnerable status of the queen when she attacks unsupported then they will soon find themselves victorious because the best that black has here is actually to capture the rook like so and it's of course immediately recaptured by the knight and um Bird can resign here, but uh, he didn't. He played on for a couple of moves. Yeah, he, uh, he actually tried to capture you with the knight. And I'm just going to show the rest of the game, even though, uh, even though the real point of this video is about the queen and. I showed how you can get in trouble with the queen and how you can exploit when your opponent plays with the queen in the wrong way. But let's just see the, the really nice end of this game. What do you think Steinitz played here? What is the nail in the coffin here? What's the first thing you look at? A check. You always look for checks first. Can you find a check? That's right. Bishop. To b5 check. Now we unveil an attack from the queen on the knight. And the problem is that if we capture the bishop, like so, can you see it? What do we play? What is the final move of the game? Queen to E, D8, checkmate, because she's backed up by the bishop. So this queen, the wise queen, she joins the battle when there is a clear formation to attack that's not too dynamic, and when she has the support she needs, then she can attack with devastating effect. 
Okay, so that's the first lesson about the queen. You attack when you have developed your army in such a way that you know where you want to deploy your most powerful queen, your most powerful piece. You don't want to lose Tempe running around all over the board. You don't want to put her somewhere early and then find out that the really important part of the battle is going on on some other side of the board and then your most important piece is misplaced. No, you want to allow the opening to go its way and then when you have an idea about where you need the queen, when you can see what your opponent is doing, when your pieces are in play, then you deploy the queen. Okay, I'll just go run through the game again, this time quickly, but I find that it's very good for learning. Very good for learning to repeat. And let that wisdom from 150 years ago, what Steinitz taught you 150 years ago, let that sink in as we repeat this game quite quickly. D4, E6, and E4 taking the center. D5, challenging center and knight c3 protecting e4 d takes e knight takes e and the mistake knight to f6 and you see based on this whole game you see why now in this opening Grandmaster's playing knight, d7, so that after some move by white, let's say knight f3, we can play knight f6, and if the knights are exchanged, we don't have to capture with the queen, and get in trouble, no, we can capture with the knight. That is why, in this position, the Grandmasters do not play knight f6, they want to play knight f6, but they prepare with knight d7 first. Henry Bird played knight f6. We saw knight takes. Check. We don't want to take with the g pawn to ruin the pawn structure. So we capture with the queen. But that is also a mistake. Puts the queen out too early. And Stein displays knight to f3 with thoughts on attacking the queen on g5 with the bishop knight c6 and bishop g5 attacking the queen queen moves out of the way to f5 we just keep attacking the queen bishop d3 attacking the queen queen g4, attacking g2, and here we say, okay, is there a way to continue attacking the queen, where we can even give up some material, but get her so close to our pieces that there will be no escape, and Steinitz was able to find the way, h3, attacking the queen, there is no queen h5, because of g4, so queen takes, and the coup de gras, rook h2, checkmating the queen, queen takes rook, knight takes queen, and here the game ended very quickly, because a frustrated Henry Bird played knight takes d4, bishop, b5, check, and bird resigned because he can't capture the bishop, b5, 
because if he tries, the wise queen swoops in and delivers checkmate on d8. Okay, a little bit of movie magic to bring us to this position. And I would like to give a shout out to chessstrategyonline.com where I found this example position that I like very much. It's white to play and we have this position and we are thinking about the queen. Okay, so the quick among you will maybe get this right away. The interesting part though is how do we get to the conclusion? What sort of rules of thumb heuristics do we use to get to the correct answer? Because those can be used in all positions, even ones way more complicated than this one. Okay, so what do we do? When we look at our pieces here, we can see that they're all on the back rank. And we can see that they're not doing that much. So when we go and talk to our pieces, and I always recommend that you talk to your pieces, and ask them how are you doing? Are you happy with what you are doing? What can they? Does it, is it meaningful for you? What can we do to improve your situation? Should we either move you or should we make what you are already doing more meaningful? If we do that, we will talk to all the pieces and at some point we will talk to the queen about what she is doing and where she would like to be. In other videos, I will teach you how to talk to the knights, to the rooks, to the bishops, to the pawns and to the king. But this one is about talking, speaking to the ladies. Do you have trouble speaking to the ladies? If you are watching, I'll teach you. I'll teach you the art. It's actually not that difficult. Just ask her some meaningful questions. For instance here, what are you doing and what would you like to be doing? Here, the queen is on this file, the E file, looking at this pawn. That's not bad, like she is doing way more than, for instance, this rook over here that's trapped. But the file does not seem uh, very easy to open up. We could contemplate maybe playing something like F4 to utilize this file to maybe when the pawn is captured, maybe get an attack towards the opponent's queen. Problem really is, opponent's queen is also protected by bishop and pawn. Probably we're not getting, going to get too much, but we notice it, we think about it, okay. What, where does a lady want to be? Well, it is not uncommon for a lady to want to be the center of attention. And in chess, at least, that is the case. So a centralized queen is a strong queen. Because from the center of the board, she can exercise her influence all over the land. And that is the kind of ruler she wants to be. Okay, so now we know that a centralized queen is a strong queen. Is there a way to centralize the queen? Well, the center is these four squares. What happens if we put her on one of those? And then, like we can uh, talk a little bit about cutlery, because uh, you have a spoon, you have a knife, and of course you have a fork. And a queen like this one really likes 
to get in there and fork stuff up. So when you centralize the queen, and then you can ask yourself, is there some forks going on? And here the queen is attacking this rook. This rook is undefended. The queen is also cooperating with this bishop. They are forming a battery, actually. Okay, can we use that for something? Is there some place else this queen could be attacking? Well, let's take a look here at h7. Okay, we are now actually threatening to get close to the king. And that is one more lesson I'd like you to take home. That the queen really likes to get close to the opponent's king. No jokes, please, no jokes. Because she is not a seductress. She is there to kill him. Yep, she is, she is after his life. And she is very good at checkmating. So if you can get a queen with adequate, adequate support close to your opponent's king, then that's good. Okay. So here we use the theme of centralization. That's uh, a word we have in our vocabulary to inspire us to look for interesting moves. Okay, we see, is, it, is there some point to centralizing the queen? Well, we actually attack the rook. Okay, that's nice. And we are attacking maybe the opponent king. Okay, but what if the rook just steps out of the way? Well, then we look for checks. Can we get anywhere? Queen, h7 check. King, 2, f8. And here we just use a principle that's it's very, very uh, common when you use the queen, that you look for checks, because the queen has such a big area she can attack, so she can give a lot of checks. And we always start by examining the checks, because they are the most forcing, so they are easier to calculate. Okay, we had one check, let's see, are there any more checks? Well, what about this one? Check, only one legal move. King to e7, and the coup de gras. Can you find it? Well, I didn't talk, so I didn't speak so much to the other pieces. But what about this rook? That was our best piece in a classical sense before we improve the queen, because it's on an open file, and it's attacking d8. So queen to d8 here is checkmate. Okay, so let's just repeat that before we go to the next position and the next lesson about the queen. We found ourselves in this position and we were in the process of just speaking to our pieces and I'm going to teach you how to speak to all of these. But this video is about the queen and we asked her what she was doing. She was on the back rank, she was on this file, she would like to improve her situation. What is one way to improve a queen situation? You make her the center attention you centralize the queen so we saw if there was a way to do that there was okay then we thought okay is that interesting what kind of stuff could she be doing and she could be forking stuff up she would be attacking the rook and she would be looking towards the king attacking an undefended rook that's good and we also know now that a queen with adequate support is very, very effective against a king, attacking a king. We saw if, if you try to save the rook, we get a deadly checkmating attack. And unfortunately for the black, there is there's nothing really you can do. Because if you try to defend the king, 
you lose the rook. If you try anything to defend the rook, well, let's say you move her, the rook to b8, then check, check, and checkmate. So here we learned centralization. We learned that the queen is very good at forking pieces. And we learned that it's always good to start by examining what possible checks you have. And this is even more true with the queen because there are so many ways she can give check. Now let's move on to the next position. Okay. So here we are again. A new position. And remember, you are free to drift off to sleep at any moment. We are just hanging out, talking a little bit about chess and the queens. And you are not missing anything. You can always come back. see a little bit let's talk a little bit about this position what's going on okay from the white side what's going on we have this king over here he has castle to the king side and he is very safe but not supremely safe because there is this Then we have the rooks. This rook is on a very good file against the opponent's king here. It's very happy. This rook is also quite happy, looking potentially at this d6 pawn here as soon as this moves. And it can also join the attack over here. But pretty happy rook. This knight, pretty close the king and uh, then the sniper bishops here they are both pointed towards black's king finally her majesty the queen if it was black to move if it was white to move rather if it was white to move what would you play my guess is you would play queen to h7 with a checkmate because we have the same battery as before the queen supported by the bishop it's a classic battery can deliver many checkmates okay so it the position is boring if if it's white to move so let's go ahead and make it black to move and let's see what knowledge we will need we will need about the queens what can we learn about the queens in order to find a way to defend this position for black? Okay, what's going on here? We can see we are down two pawns, but white is down three pawns. So we are actually up material a little bit. These two rooks are very good. They are on this open file that we actually have control over. They are forming a battery. They are also laterally helping some defense, the defensive effort. This bishop is attacking this pawn. Maybe we could argue that it's an okay bishop. Uh, a pawn structure on the king side is okay, but really our problems is in this area here of the board. This bishop and this knight, they are both just defending these two pawns. And we have this devastating attack towards our king coming in. So how can we try to defend? Okay. position we can 
and try to play bishop to f8 because this way the rook now can see h7 so queen h7 is no longer checkmate okay the problem here is that when we move back we are undefending the pawn on f uh, f6 and actually white could go ahead actually and capture that with the bishop uh, that's not the strongest continuation but it is winning um, the biggest problem here actually is that uh, with the queen I mean the, the bishop moves out of this long diagonal here this bishop here now has almost direct line of sight against the king and this is a sniper bishop you don't want to give the sniper bishop a line of sight towards your majesty and um, in a position like in this position with the queen of uh, with the bishop f8 uh, i think the strongest move for white is g5 and the problem here is that this pawn cannot capture it pinned by this rook this pawn cannot capture because of line of sight from the bishop it's pinned here and the queen can capture but the problem is that when white recaptures like so both of our pawns are still pinned and we can't uh, we can recapture so we've just lost queen and after a move like g5 white is threatening to just capture here or here and we will have no defensive measures left because in uh, moving this bishop we actually we actually missed the saving grace that i'm going to show you so instead of bishop f8, what can we do? And here is like is one of the really big things that you want to know when you are playing against the queen, or something that if you are attacking with the queen and you have a strong attack, something you really want to look out for that your opponent does not get to do to you. Because black here, like we are of a pawn, that's nice. And really our problem is the very strong checkmating attack. But if there were no queens, that checkmating attack would not be that um, dangerous. So if you are defending against a very ferocious attack led by the queen, See if you can find a way to exchange your queen for your opponent's queen. That's an even trade in terms of points, like they are equally good, but an attacking queen is worth more than a defensive queen, so that trade benefits you. Is there a way right now to trade these queens? What is the first thing you look for? right you look for checks what checks do you have with the queen you have this one check that's not so good king can take rook can take but you also have this check and why is that so good well with the bishop here this pawn is not pinned so if white captures your queen, you can recapture, and now all of a sudden you can start to defend. White still has a good position, it's not going to be easy to win the game from here, but you can. You have a lot of fighting chances here. Because you sort of took the sting out of white's attack. And of course, if uh, if 
if white moves the king, you just capture the queen and let allow them to recapture. And you have a similar situation where you got rid of the queens. So an attacking queen that is backed up by um, by sufficient support is way, way more valuable than a defensive queen. What does that mean? That means that if you're playing against an attacking queen, one strategy you can use is to look to exchange the queens, because that will make your job a lot easier. Yeah, she is. Let's put her on a white square. So what did we learn about the queen? We learned that in the beginning of the game you should be very careful to put your queen out too early because a queen that does not have sufficient support is very vulnerable. If you are playing against a early developed queen Know that she can be very dangerous, but you want to try to get Tempe. You want to attack her while putting your pieces in good positions. Then we learned that when you attack with the queen, you will try to look for centralizing her. You will try to look to put her near your opponent's king. You will see if she has any uh, way to make some good folks because she has this enormous range. She can fork diagonally and on the files and on the ranks. Then you, we learned that you will always try to look for checks with the queen uh, because it makes it easier to calculate. Then we learned that a sufficiently supported aggressive or attacking queen is worth way more than a defensive queen. And that means that if you are being attacked by a queen and you judge that the attack is strong, you will be looking to trade the queens off. And there are much more to the queen, but you now have a very solid foundation. I just want to add one small thing that can sort of be something for you to think about, all like the different things that you can explore without to use the queen. Because Capablanca, and I know people like how I say Capablanca, 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 he noticed something about the queen and he wrote it in a book, he said that the queen and the knight are very, very good friends when attacking, because they complete one another. The knight can do what the queen can't, and that is why they are a formidable attacking force when they are working together. And I'm just including this just as a small little interesting thing that you can sort of think about it it shows all the like different kinds of interesting things that are relevant with the queen just small little things and you can go explore on your own make your own judgments try them out then if they fail go back revise them feel free to discuss it in the comments you will have a lot of luck with the ladies.